Alright, hello and welcome back to your boy Hank Hackerson at Hank Hacks Hackers, your favorite system and network attacker. And this is going to be part three of the lateral movement and pivoting room inside of Try Hack Me. Uh, in part one, we went through the uh, introduction of the room, moving through the network explanation and spawning processes remotely exercises. Uh, part two, we went through laterally using WMI and the alternate authentication material uses. And today we're going to go through abusing user behavior and port forwarding and pretty much wrap the room. Um, if you have not done this room or if this is your first time doing this room, I highly recommend doing part one first because it explains you how to set up the room, which is very important. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get access to the network or any of the resources on the network. We also explain it at the top of part two. So either part one or part two would explain that for you. But if you haven't seen either of those, I would just recommend you going through all of those. Now, if you're already in this room and you're trying to figure out the answers to this, then you're more than welcome to just stay. And then we're going to go through the user behavior and port forwarding sections. Before we get started, I humbly request and kindly request that if you like this content, if you've gotten any value from this content, or from my channel at all, I would very much love it if you could do me a huge favor and like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and even drop a comment because all of that helps the algorithm so that it gives us more reach and we can grow the channel and get more people inside the community. So it would mean a lot to me. I don't ask for anything apart from that. I drop these videos daily and that's literally all I ask for. Apart from that, it's all free and you're more than welcome to do it. So uh, it would mean the world to me. If you could do that, I'm going to stop right there. I'm not going to keep going on that um, so that we can actually jump into the, the content of the rest of this course and wrap this whole thing up. Okay, so diving right into it, abusing user behavior is essentially taking advantage of something that somebody did that they shouldn't have done, as the name implies, right? So there's something called network shares that people use all the time to do day-to-day -day stuff. And sometimes that network share is publicly accessible. So on a, on a IP address like this, right? And so they do this because the admin wants other people to be able to log into it without actually having it downloaded on their machine. And when somebody goes and tries to use that, it moves that script, that executable to their temp folder and then it executes it on their workstation. So that way, if we can get access to that somehow or interrupt that process somehow, we can put some kind of a payload in there so that when the user actually downloads it and uses it on their workstation, that payload executes and then we get a backdoor into the system or we get some kind of a shell into their system. Uh, backdooring VBS scripts is another version of this where you can create an object like so and then this particular one is going to move the netcat64 executable into their share, their temp directory. It goes from the share to the temp directory. And then it sends a reverse shell back to us on our netcat listener on our attacking machine. And then we could do backdooring the exe files by using an MSF Venom payload to create something called a putty. So it's for putty, but it would create a, an executable, a backdoor onto the putty executable. It's going to be called putty x.exe and then that's going to send a reverse TCP uh, meterpreter load uh, that was used uh, for by MSF Venom, which is a Metasploit thing. And that's going to connect back to a multi-handler module that we have open on Metasploit. So basically a reverse shell just using Metasploit instead of Netcat. And then you have the concept of hijacking somebody's RDP session, uh, which a lot of times what they do is instead of uh, logging out of their RDP session, so it says right here, so instead of logging off, they just close the RDP client, but that actually leaves their session still open. So it's not, uh, their, uh, their RDP is closed, but they haven't logged off, so we can take advantage of that, which means that if we go and run a administrator uh, command prompt, so run the command prompt as admin, you just right click on it, and then you run it as administrator, you can get either system level access or admin level access, and then you can do very nifty, sneaky little things. So 
once you have it open, you can run PS exec, which is available inside our tools for this lab. But if you don't have it on your own personal machine, you would need to download it. And then you run PS exec, uh, uh, the command prompt. So you use PS exec to run the command prompt, excuse me. And then the, you list the sessions using this little command. And so in this session, you can see that you have the admin and you have Luke. And the admin session name is RDP TCP6. The ID is two, and his session is actually active, meaning he's actually in the RDP right now. But Luke doesn't have a session name. His ID is still there. And the disk status means that it's the his window is closed, but it's still open, right? So it says it. Uh, Luke has a session left open with ID three. Anything with a disk state has been left open by the user, but it's not being used as the moment. So we can take over it, right? We could also take over the admin session, but they're already in the session. So if we take over it, it's going to kick him out. And then he's going to be like, what the hell is just going on? And then it's going to raise a red flag, right? So what you want to do is use somebody's session who's not currently in it so that they're not going to get kicked out. And then no red flags are going to go off. So to be able to connect to the session, we just do the tscon uh, executable and specify the session ID. And what we want to do is we want to use the, the administrator's um, uh, session name so that we can take over as the administrator. So we're going to take over Luke's session because he's session three, but we're going to use the session name of the admin to take over as an administrator on Luke's session. And then you have that, and now you can start doing you know, nifty little things in Luke's RDP and connect to it immediately. Uh, this happens for everything below Windows 2016, I believe. I think they explained it at some point, but it says that Windows 2019 and above won't let you do this without the password. So you would need his password to be able to do that. But if it's not Windows 2019, so anything younger than that or anything lower than Windows 2016, you can literally just take over it without any problems. So that being said, we're going to now run the actual exercise itself. We're going to do the practical version of this and we need to generate some credentials for ourselves and use xfree RDP, which is a nifty little command line tool that will open up a new session for you inside RDP using just basic information about the machine you're trying to connect to the user and the user's password. So that's why we need this thing to be able to generate that for us. And then once we have that generated, we can RDP into the computer. All right, so we have this loaded. So this is the link that you would go to right here to actually load it. And it requires that you're, connect to or that you're connected to the network, which is why it's important for you to go through the instru instructions inside the introduction because it shows you how to connect to the network either from the attack box or from your own machine. But once you are connected to the network, you can actually load this link and then we can press get credentials and it will generate some credentials for us. So these are the credentials that we got. And now we can use those credentials to X free RDP into the system. And uh, because it's going to open up a new window, it's going to open up an actual windows desktop window. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I just, I did this already, but there's a little button down here, the view full screen button. Whoops. That kind of did that. Um, that little button uh, will open up a, new window for you and it opens it up in you can open it up in full screen mode there you go and so now that we have this we can go here and we can log in using xfree rdp so this is what that looks like And there you go, you do that. And once you accept it, it actually opens up a new window for you. Just like that. How crazy is that? So, okay, so now we have this and it's gonna log into the Windows machine for us. And so the instructions will say that we're gonna work on hijacking an RDP session. If you're interested in trying backdooring an EXE or other files, you can do that uh, with the local persistence room. So what we're gonna try to do specifically in this one is we're going to take over the RDP session uh, to hijack Toby Beck's RDP uh, to get our flag. So uh, when you, uh, the note right here says that when you execute the query session command, which we just saw, you'll see several users named T1 Toby Beck followed by a number. These are identical copies 
and you can hijack any of them. You don't need to hijack them all. Make sure you hijack a session marked as disconnected, which is disk, and then to avoid interfering with any other user. So that being said, that's basically what we're gonna do. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to open a command prompt with uh, an admin. And so I'm just gonna kind of zoom in on this so you could see this a little bit easier. And so you do the search thing right here and you do command exe, right click on it and then run it as administrator. And it says, do you wanna do that? And we say, yeah, we do. So now we have an administrator command prompt. And the first thing that we got to do is we got to run PS exec uh, that's inside the tools uh, folder so that we can turn ourselves into a system uh, permission. And so to do that, it would be, I'm just going to go into tools. And from here, I can run PS exec 64.exe scmd.exe. And that will allow me to do this. And so now I have a system version of this. So now when I do query user, we should see a few things right here. So we see a bunch of different versions of Toby Beck. Um, I mean, all of them are disconnected. So that means we could basically go into either one. And uh, these are their ID numbers. And Charlie Holland, which is who I am right now, is an admin, right? So we want to get an admin session of any of these guys right here. So the command itself is tscon, so ts connect, and then we choose one of the session IDs. So we'll do whatever two, I guess, and then the uh, destination is going to be RDP TCP number three, which is my session name. Right? Press that, and there we go. <laughs> That's the flag, just like that, and immediately open it up. And that's literally the flag that we need for this one. So pretty straightforward. Uh, if you actually run it correctly, you can hijack a RDP session very easily. And just like that, we got nice wallpaper, which just to kind of show you back here, that's the actual flag right down here. So uh, from this now, we can close this little session out and we can move on to the uh, the next one, 